So over the past 15 years, I've had around 45 fights. Before that, we're talking another 10 years of sparring. Overall, if I had to count the sparring rounds I've done, I'd kind of be lost, but we're talking thousands. So I definitely have some sparring tips to give you guys today. 10 sparring tips to help make the whole experience more enjoyable and help you be more successful. Sparring is one of those things, doesn't matter if you're looking to compete, it's super necessary, or if you're just in the gym wanting to get better, also very necessary. You can go through the motions, but not actually sparring is really gonna pull away from your ability to improve. So most people who spar are looking to improve. This video will definitely help you. Before we get into the 10 tips, which are gonna hopefully make a big difference, if you guys appreciate the episode, if you like the idea, please give it a like. Of course, get subscribed. I need that little bump up to 100,000 subscribers. We're almost there. Every extra subscriber is super appreciated. And and let's get on with the episode. Tip number one, I wanna talk about keeping your stomach tight. The reason for this is very simple. Many people when I spar them and I tag them to the body and they go, oh, and I can tell the hurt and I talk with them after, I go, oh, was your stomach tightened? And they go, oh no, not in that moment because I was throwing my own shot. I didn't have time to tighten my stomach before your counter shot came and I went, no, no, that's entirely wrong. Out here, you can relax your stomach. But as soon as you get into this exchange zone, your stomach should already be tight. Now I've talked on the channel about doing exercises when you're just sitting at the office, typing. Just practice tightening your stomach and holding it for 30 seconds, breathing normal. Or if you're sitting in the movie theater watching a show or something, just tighten your stomach, 30 seconds, and just breathe normal. This is good training because when we move from out here relaxed to in here punching, the stomach should be clenched. It'll help protect you. It'll make a world of difference when somebody lands that body shot and it allows you to keep your hands extra high with your stomach a little less protected because you know you'll be safe there. But in exchange for that, your head is not as compromised and you take very little damage up here. Tip number two, step outside your comfort zone and try new things. Very often when we focus on this mindset of going into a sparring match and having to win it, but not really recognizing that there is no winner because there's no judges there, we don't wanna try new things. But when we don't try new things, our skill level is not going to improve. So if you're somebody who's having a lot of difficulty jumping levels, try things in pad work on the bag, and then try and bust them out in sparring. If you don't try them in sparring, you're never gonna execute in the fight. So it might be something difficult. You're like, okay, you know, I'm gonna draw attention up to the head, slam the body, and then try and come with the high kick. But if you just do it in the pad work, again, it will never come to fruition. You actually have to do it in sparring. But sometimes to do that, we have to step outside our zone. Sometimes we get swept or thrown or we get hit for trying something new, but that's okay because you don't win sparring matches. Next up, I wanna talk about continually working fakes to see if you can create a specific opening. A lot of people try to just throw shots. They're just like, oh, I'm gonna throw and I hope something lands. But what I love to do when I'm in sparring is go, I'm gonna target the stomach for my next few shots. I really wanna see if I can land three or four shots to the stomach. How am I gonna do it? Well, maybe I'll throw a cross. I'll throw the cross. I'll throw the cross again, and then I'll throw the cross as I step through. I know their hands are gonna be high because they've seen so many attacks come to head level, and then from there, I'll huck that knee into the body, just a step through knee. Or maybe I do something like I throw a front kick. I throw a front kick. When I see them start to repeatedly get comfortable and catch or block that front kick, then I lift and I fall to a jab. And I create these openings by utilizing fakes. When we can start doing this, we're really engaging the mental side of sparring and that's when you're really gonna start getting next level. The next thing I wanna talk about is creating goals or objectives if we're fighting somebody or sparring with somebody less skilled than us. Now, why is this so important? Well, the first thing we have to recognize is that sparring with somebody less skilled than us should not be wasted time. If every time we go with somebody who's slightly less skilled than us and we just go, ah, you know, I'm gonna pick them apart with the things I'm best at, I'm really good at jabs, I'm just gonna jab them. By the time the round has concluded, I haven't got any better at anything because I just really made things easy on myself. But what I could do is go, oh, okay, you know, maybe I'm gonna land as many body hooks as I can. 
And even after this guy starts recognizing that the body hook's coming, I'm going to figure out how to utilize fakes to land that body shot. And then once they start recognizing that the fakes and the body shots are coming, maybe I sweep my leg and I hit him with the body shot. He starts going, oh, and he's really protected there. Then I have to work to draw his attention away from there. So then I start touching him up there. I start attacking the legs. Eventually that spot will open and I'll go back to attacking it. I create a challenge for myself to make sure that I get as much out of the round as I can, even when the guy's not as skilled as me. The next thing I want to talk about, which is very important for number one, main the next thing, the next thing I want to talk about, which is very important for maintaining a good fight mindset, but we're talking about sparring right now, is don't develop that mentality that if you hit me, I have to get you back. He hit me, I went, oh, and then smack, I've got to come back. Because what this does is it creates that idea that if somebody hits you in a fight, then you're going to kind of rhino your way in and get them back. But sometimes right after you got clipped, it's not a great time to go back on the offensive, to get that exchange or get that level sort of balanced out because you might be in a bad situation or maybe this guy has your number at this moment. So you take a shot and you back away. Now that's the fight mindset. But for the sparring mindset, it's just developing that ability to get hit and not go crazy, not go, I have to hit you right now. And if you can do that in sparring, you're more likely to pull it off in the fight. It's a very good training and it stops the sparring from escalating, constantly getting higher and higher and higher to all of a sudden we're almost in a full on fight. You get hit, it escalates for a moment and then you just kind of draw back down by moving out and just going, okay, I'll just take my time. I'll make sure I'm not getting tagged again. Maybe they'll get him back. Not like crazy hard, but I'll tag him back in 20, 30 seconds when I've cooled down and when I know I'm safe and recovered. One of the massive concerns about fight sports is head impact. Now, if we go in sparring every time full out, it's going to eventually lead to damage. So we want to minimize the amount of hard rounds that we spar. How do we go about doing that? Well, what we can do is we can save the hard rounds for only before fights. Aside from that, we can go in and we can play tag. We can touch. We can make sure we're getting some good technical rounds in, kind of like a lot of the Thai fighters that we see, but we save those hard rounds for just before fights. So we can keep that brain intact and have a nice long career. And then after our fight career, our brain is still working and we don't have any damage up there. My next sparring tip is make yourself spar in your weak zones. So what do I mean by that? What do I mean by weak zones? Well, we all have our favorite spot to compete. Some people love fighting in the clench. They'll do everything they can in every sparring match to get to the clench. Some people hate the clench and they'll never engage and they'll always stay out here. Some people want to be inside and dirty box. Some people want to throw lots of round kicks and they like that distance. Whatever your favorite spot is, execute there sometimes, but then think about where you're least comfortable and specifically take the sparring match there. Now we could do that in just a regular sparring round, but very often we'll revert back to our favorite. So what we could do sometimes is say to our sparring partner, let's do a really tight round. Like we're going to crush against each other and we're just going to call it phone booth fighting. Or you could say to somebody, oh, let's sort of spar tie style today. And we're just going to focus on slamming those round kicks into the biceps and trying to check and come back with your round kicks. You can always work your weak zones because when you work your weak zones, your overall skill level is going to improve dramatically. Now we already talked about doing sparring, not too hard unless you're getting close to a fight, but what you can utilize for sparring, sometimes if you're like, I want to do hard rounds or you're the more skilled guy, is go free reign on body shots and low kicks. Recognize that those are okay. And most likely with a nice big 16 ounce glove, you're not going to hurt any ribs. You're just going to win the guy, but he'll pop back up and he'll be okay. And the low kicks, even though they hurt, people will recover and they will get better low kick conditioning because of that. This is a rule of sparring, which I have had for a long, long time. Light on the head, almost free reign on the body and the legs. And in this way, I can practice banging super hard, slamming things in, getting my heart rate up, making it closer to a real fight, but then pulling the headshots. Only when we get deep into fight camp do I start picking up the headshots and putting in a little more power behind them. Now, many people struggle with their cardio, but one of my tips is learn to relax at sort of 
safe zones or in between exchanges by just taking a step back and utilizing fakes. So if I'm getting extremely tired, I've been in this exchange, I'm throwing, I'm throwing, I'm throwing lots, and I'm going and going and going. And then when I step out, I don't really step out far enough, and from here I'm still really tense. Just take that extra six inches, and now from here, instead of letting the guy just walk to you because you're clearly and visibly trying to take a break, from the outside, where you know you're safe, just throw some shots. Just pump a little bit. It still looks like I'm working here. From here, on the outside, ooh, but I'm really, I'm just on a break right now, as opposed to me just stepping back and going, huh, and showing you that I'm just ready to be a punching bag. No, when I move from the outside and I'm here, I'm just, and that's break time for me. And it's a great time to work on maximizing your recovery. And my last sparring tip for you guys today is defense should not require high energy output. Now, this is kind of similar to the last point, which I just touched on. But when we want to maximize our recovery or we don't want to burn down in sparring, we need to recognize what are the high output zones, high output being throwing my combos, what are my entire break zones, way out here where I'm throwing my fakes, and then in between on defense where I can work about 30-40% energy output. I need to be relaxed here. I need to not be going and feeling like my defense is as exhausting as my offense. They shouldn't even be on the same zone. It should be fairly similar, in all honesty, to one guy, let's say in pad work, one guy hitting the pads, 100% output, and one guy holding the pads, like 20, 30% output. Very similar on defense. When you can develop that mindset and you can actually execute your defense with little energy output, you're gonna be so much better at sparring and you will not fatigue in the same way. And that right there, guys, is my 10 sparring tips for you today that should help you improve your skill level and make you more comfortable with sparring. Make sure you guys share this episode with some sparring partners because it might make your overall exchanges, your overall sparring just that much better. If you have a Facebook page for your gym, throw the link up there, make sure everybody's seeing it because we want sparring partners to work and get along and help everybody in the gym increase their skill level. Plus, sharing it will help the channel grow and get me that much closer to 100,000 subscribers, which is coming very soon. I'm super excited about it. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. If you have not already, join the channel, get subscribed, train hard, guys. I hope the sparring continues to go well and you can improve. I'll see you back here soon for another video.